One thing you may have noticed recently, whether you're in the Geometry Dash community or not, is a trailer of a sequel to the very game that started it all, The Impossible Game. The showcase video revealed just how much of an upgrade it was from the old 2009 version, with new features such as ship <coughs> jetpack, shooter mode, greatly improved graphics, and a cross-platform mode where you raise 60 other players to beat some of your favorite levels. In this video, I'm going to be discussing what I think of it. Is it a good game? Is Flute Games returning the favor and ripping off Geometry Dash? And what does the future hold for this promising game? All of these will be answered, but first, if you're interested in more GED content, please consider subscribing as it would really help. If you're not interested, don't. Either way, I hope you enjoy the video. So how about those new features? Well, the backgrounds certainly look better, no doubt about that. However, the simpleness of the block design reminds me of how basic this game is. Geometry Dash definitely holds an edge in that regard. It also introduced some features that were definitely not stolen from GD, such as move triggers and rotate triggers. A new shooter mode has been added, something that I think will work for this, although I wouldn't want to see it in GD. Flute Games has also made a multiplayer mode that isn't very big, but at least it's not taking them as long as Rob Top to make. They also decided to use the idea of being able to make anything in the main levels using the editor, excluding boss fights of course. That's a problem that I'll talk about more later. For now, let's get into if I think this is ripping off Rob Top's ripoff. Not really. While The Impossible Game 2 is clearly taking some of its ideas from GD, it doesn't really seem like some bitter attempt to one-up Rob Top. It's also added original ideas such as shooter mode that set it apart. With that out of the way, let's get into the future of this game. Seeing as many in the GD community are supportive, it should have a good start. However, neither the original game nor the sequel really seem big enough for long-term success in the way that GD was. The level design is quite basic, and the editor doesn't really seem to have the same volume of customization as GD does. The fact that it doesn't allow you to recreate boss fights is proof enough that this game will probably lose everyone's attention after a few days or weeks after release, give or take. So those are my thoughts on The Impossible Game 2 and its potential. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like and subscribing and telling me your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching!